Councillor Mellon? Present. Councillor Gardner? Present. Councillor Tulowitzki? Present. Pre and, and President Culturitis? Present. All five councillors are here in person this evening. Uh, please stand for a moment of silence for the Pledge of Allegiance. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, thank you again for coming in today. Uh, that brings us on to the proclamation of Arbor Day. Here we go. Proclamation recognizing Arbor Day, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. Whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. Whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heat and cooling cause moderate the temperature, clean the air, reduce oxygen and provide habitat for the wildlife. Whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fire, countless other wood products. Whereas trees in our town increase property value, enhance the economic vitality of business areas and beautify our community. And whereas trees, whenever they are planted, are the source of joy and spiritual renewal now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the town council of the town of Munster hereby supports April 30th, 2021 as Arbor Day and encourages its citizens to support efforts to protect their trees and woodlands and be it further proclaimed that the town of Con the town council and the town of Munster encourages all citizens to plant trees to gladden hearts and promote the well-being of this and future generations. I have a motion. So moved. Second. 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 Go ahead, Mr. Kulowitzki. All right. Roll call, please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. And President Coulteritis? Yes. All right. All right. Are we, gonna, are we just going to, are we just going to hang out or are we going to just? Let's go through the way it is. Justin, uh, he is available for the change orders at the beginning of the meeting. If you okay. would like an update, uh, how we're kicking things off in the spring, uh, he is here also available to provide that. We'll just wait until we get to the test. Okay. All right. That brings us to the public comment session. The person public comments are limited to two minutes maximum per person or five minutes for a group spokesman. Please keep your comments civil and constructive to public policy issues. Chair, so discretion may recognize individuals wishing to speak on different topics at any time and may end the open to the public session. All speakers will be timed by the clerk treasurer. This portion of me shall not exceed 20 minutes. Is there anybody who wishes to speak tonight? Please come to the podium, state your name and your address. Anybody electronically, Justin? No, but I did receive a comment from an employee from a from a resident that wanted it to be read into the record. Go right ahead. I can summarize that. It is from uh, Ms. Gretchen Hogan from Harrison Avenue. I forwarded this in its entirety to Clerk Treasurer Miss for the record. Uh, the gist of it is that Ms. Hogan has been following the CDC's guide, guidance uh, and the trends of COVID-19 infection rates in our area. Uh, the CDC is not recommending lifting the face mask mandate at this time, and also the infection rates have been trending upwards, particularly in the young adult age group. With this in mind, Ms. Hogan would encourage the town of Munster to maintain the face mask mandate and to monitor the trends of infection in our region. Uh, she would also say that because we are a border community, the influx of citizens from outside the state coming to bars and other service establishments in our community, particularly because the mandate is lifted, is disconcerting. Uh, so in this case, she would hope that the Munster Police Department will be ready to deal with the late night revelers and so on that will perhaps not be as courteous 
of the as the citizens uh, late in the evening hours. Thank you, Justin. Yep. That was the only one. That was the only one that I received. I will close the open for the public session. That brings down to the consent agenda. Is the question? Mr. President, I move we approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I second the motion. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. And President Kulturitis? Yes. Five zero. All right. Going down to old business. Uh, first on the list is the ordinance eighteen nineteen amending the schedule a second reading. Mr. President, I will move that we adopt ordinance eighteen nineteen at the second reading regarding the amendment of police fees. I'll second that. All right. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. President Kulturitis? Yes. Five zero. Brings us down to ordinance 1820, the budget transfer second reading. Mr. President, I would move um, to adopt introduced ordinance 1820 on second reading as presented. Is there a second? Second here. All right. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. And President Kulturitis? Yes. Five to zero. Thank you. It brings us down to Ordinance 1821, the 50 50 sidewalk replacement program, second reading. Mr. President, I move that we adopt the sidewalk replacement program on its second reading. Our second. I'll second the motion. Is there any discussion? Just want to ask Mr. Anderson if he's heard from the public about this at all. Uh, not since the last council meeting. Uh, no. When we hear from the public, it's usually uh, ab about a service request. And when we say this is on the horizon, uh, it was received favorably. Uh, but I have received no individual comments uh, from the public since the last council meeting on this. One question I had was about who would, who would do the work? Um, because the town is paying for half of it. Does the town choose the contract, the contractor? Yes, sir. Uh, it would be done through JJ Newell. Uh, and that is uh, on the agenda this evening uh, as well. Okay. So the idea is that you would make, uh, we would make, the town would make our contractor and our commodity prices available to the resident. Uh, on a voluntary basis, and then for those mandatory uh, shell fixes, those would also be done by our contractor because it would be cheaper than having uh, the resident contract with an individual uh, firm on their own. Makes it easier to manage. Yep. I, I have one question uh, to Council. Mr. Westland, did you review this, the wording in regards to Section 6? In regards to if there's a delay or a petitioner wants to bypass it by 12 months? Generally, I reviewed the whole ordinance, but so, specifically with six, uh, section six, yes. Yep, okay. All right. That's all the questions I Thank you. My yes, sir. Sir. Sorry. Um, I noticed that first priority would be given to any leftover from last year that we weren't able to cover in the program. I'm just curious if we have any backlog starting this year. Well, we, we do have a list of known uh, bad spots, yes, uh, we're, we're ready to hit the ground running for sure. When it says hospitals and other various areas, will you be given priority? Does that mean they move to the top of the list or? So what we would do is if there would be a sidewalk adjacent to an elementary school okay. on private property versus a sidewalk that is not, that is an, uh, an equally poor condition, the sidewalk where we're gonna have higher foot traffic is gonna get priority. So all things being equal, where there's the presence of a, an attractive place to walk to, uh, either a place of worship, a school, a park, a playground, something like that, that all things being equal, that location would get priority. And the first criterion is the, the quality of the sidewalk. The yes. State. Okay, that, that was my only question. Discussion? Roll up, please. Councilor Schoon? Yes. 
Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. President Kulturitis? Yes. Five to zero. All right, that brings us to new business. Item A is the change order number 16. All right, Mr. Randall, would you like us to walk us through this? Certainly. Uh, you can hear me. Change order 16 uh, represents uh, some conflicts that we had installing some storm sewer drainage structures along the west side of Calumet. Uh, that was between 45th Street and the north end, so on both sides of CN. Um, so between 45th Street and CN, uh, there was a unknown steel utility pipe that was in conflict with the uh, bottoms of the storm structures. Uh, the storm structures have like a five to six foot sump. So because of that, they were in conflict with this unknown utility. Uh, so those wound up being shortened so that they could sit above that uh, unknown utility. We did attempt to find the owner. Uh, we were of course unsuccessful. On the north side of CN, again, on that west side, all during the construction of the southbound lanes, uh, we came into conflict with the sanitary sewer. So again, uh, it was just the bottoms of those structures. Those were shortened as well, uh, not eliminating the sump, but certainly shortening it. So the costs associated with this change order are representative of the manpower and equipment necessary to complete that work that was beyond what was anticipated in the plans uh, because these utilities did not show up in those plans. So we're asking for approval for this uh, uh, change order in the amount of $17,630.02. Um, this also expedited, of course, you know, the construction of Calumet by being able to do this kind of on the fly without having to, to wait uh, for any further um, approvals as far as design related things of that nature. Uh, and if I can't add at this point, uh, there was a, a valve also in place on that west side that was associated with that steel pipes we wound up rerouting the structure so there were two runs there was a split in the middle where there were two structures that didn't have a pipe connected because they went opposite directions north and south from that point we wound up having to adjust that where that gap was so that it was exactly where that valve was in order to avoid that so again just asking approval for the uh, approval of this change order in that amount. Thank you, Mr. President. I would make a motion that we approve change order number 16 for in dot contract B as in boy 36229 in the amount of $630.02. Per second. I'll second that. Very good discussion on this. Uh, I just have one question for Mr. Randall. This is Steve Tulewitzki. Yes, sir. Um, the, so you had to shorten the depth of the sewers. I'm wondering if we're expecting or foreseeing any change in the function of the sump or the sanitary as a result of that design change. Uh, no, we didn't change the sanitary, it was just the storm. But I, I, when I say sump, it's basically like six feet below the actual invert of the pipe where the pipes come into the structure. So it's it's basically like a holding uh, a wet well in a way, if you will. So that holds the sediment is what it's intended to do to keep that from flowing through the pipe so that those can be cleaned out rather than it be constantly flushed through the pipe. So we've kind of shortened that segment of the sump, which then of course decreases your volume, but there is still that collective ability within each structure to still contain that sediment and keep it from flowing through the pipes. Okay. Councillor Stone? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. And President Kulturitis? Yes. Five to zero. Thank you. Bring us to change order number zero two zero. Yes, this change order is for the ex escalation cost associated with epoxy coated reinforcing bars being delivered to the site to construct the underpass. Um, Unfortunately, in 2019, we incurred a couple delays, uh, which I'm sure you're well aware that uh, prompted the acceleration agreement in order to complete construction of 45th uh, last season in 2020. 
So as a result of that, the schedule being shifted back a little bit, uh, the contractor and their bar supplier had an agreement that they would have all the bars delivered by May 31st of last, last year, excuse me. Uh, unfortunately, there were 35 loads that were delivered between June 1st and the beginning of August. So with that, their agreement was $40 per ton being delivered as an escalation cost outside of that window. So this change order is requesting that cost. There's no markup associated with this this cost due to escalation in the eyes of INDOT. So the total cost is $27,689.33. Mr. President, I would move that we approve change order number 20 for INDOT contract B36229 in the amount of $27,689.33. There a second. Second. Any question on this? Mr. Randall, I, I, I sense by the uh, the tone of your your voice that um, this is typical, maybe in an indoc contract, but not in a lot of other types of contracts. This escalation of material costs—is that correct? No, no, no. There is escalation costs on indoc contracts. That's correct. There, they specifically do not allow markup on escalation. Is, is the point that I was trying to make. However, this. And, and while this is an agreement between Walsh and Harris, uh, our contract, and since it was an in-depth contract, called that we have to accept this es escalation and they have to approve this change order. Is that correct? That's correct. Indot would have accepted this cost as well. That's correct. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Councilor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. President Kulturitis? Yes. Five to zero. That brings us down to change order number 24. Okay, this change order is for the increased height of the PVC coated chain link fence above wall four. Uh, as you may have noticed, this fence was actually installed the end of March. So this was kind of brought to our attention and discussed this with Dustin. Uh, we made the determination for the safety of the pedestrian traffic on the sidewalk, as well as the traffic below to increase this fence height from 48 inches to 72. Uh, with the new alignment of 45th Street, uh, the sidewalk is now going to be directly behind this wall there between the underpass and the alley there, if you will. Uh, so. Obviously, with an increased fence height, that's the safest route uh, to protect the traveling public as well as the walking public. So we're asking uh, for your approval for the increased cost from a 48-inch PVC coated fence to the 72-inch in the amount of $6,966.45. Mr. President, I would... Uh make a motion that we approve change order number 24 for INDOT contract B3629 in the amount of $6,966.45. I'll second. Any discussion? Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. President Kulturitis? Yes. Five to zero. And while we have uh, Mr. Randall on the line, is there anything else that, uh, again, any uh, cool points of uh, interest that we could be aware of with the uh, construction of 45th for the re remaining construction? Yes, I can certainly go over some expected uh, schedules, um, at least in my opinion, um, from what I've gathered with some discussions. I'm still awaiting, um, let's say, a six-week schedule from Walsh that should be coming forthcoming very soon. But uh, uh, this week, starting tomorrow, actually, Walsh Construction is expected to resume some grading work on Old 45th between Calumet and the underpass. Um, and then next week, a Grimmer should be back on site to install the remaining storm drainage that storm sewer within that same location between Columbia and wall four. Uh, once that's complete, then Walsh is expected to complete the, let's say the aggregate base, the construction of the alley itself. And then later this month, 
Um, formerly known as Walsh and Kelly is now Milestone North. They will be back on site to do concrete and asphalt work. Uh, also, hopefully by the end of this month, early May, we will have at least the seating completed there on Old 45th, uh, potentially some sod uh, that's remaining there along 45th. And then there's also still construction of the lift station and the bike path on that east side of 45th near Clay Hole Lake. Um, all of this work should be done by the end of next month, at least I'm hoping. Uh, NIPSCO should be installing the gas service to that lift station, hopefully in the next week or two. That will prevent, you know, until they get that done, we cannot build the lift station uh, lot uh, as far as the aggregate base and the asphalt until they're, they're completed in that respect. Um, and then there'll be just some, we've got uh, architectural surface treatment. So the painting on walls three and four, which are on the Southwood Drive side of the underpass and then uh, some concrete ceiling and anti-graffiti coating and uh, pavement markings. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, any other questions for Lee while we run along? Just one note on the pavement markings. Uh, we're gonna include the painting of the median curbs. That was some feedback that we received throughout the winter that the uh, curbs were difficult to see for some drivers. So we're just gonna, uh, where they go above grade, uh, hit that with the uh, high visibility yellow. That's a good idea. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Okay. That brings us down to the Shared Ethics Advisory Commission appointment. Pretty much every year we actually appoint someone to this uh, commission, and this year I am appointing Wendy Miss. I don't think you have to make a motion, actually. That's right. It's just correct. It brings us down to the EMA designation. I will make a motion that we designate Fire Chief Mike Hyduk or Mark Hyduk, uh, the individual representing the legislative body of the civil town of Munster at the Lake County Emergency Management Advisory Council in 2021. I'll second. All right. Any discussion on this? Oh, please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tilwitzki? Yes. President Kultaritis? Yes. Five to zero. Congratulations, Chief Heidi. Great. Brings us to the Axon contract amendment for additional body cameras. Um, Mr. President, um, as you know, uh, Council already approved the Axon contract for six years for body cameras. Um, I apologize to the council, but evidently uh, we can't count at the police department. <laughs> that being said, it was an oversight, which I take responsibility for, but we are requesting an additional four body cameras with the warranty and the, and the uh, cloud uh, backup, which comes for a grand total of $9,840, which will be divvied up into six payments, one every year. I will forgive you for not counting correctly, Chief. Thank you. As, okay. Mr. President, I move that we authorize the addition of four body cameras and the supporting warranty services to the Axon body camera contract for six years, not to exceed an amount of $9,840. Or second. I'll second that. Right. Any discussion? Well, I just had a question for Chief. If yeah. the body cameras, the rest of them are already in service in the field? Yes, in patrol, they're in service. The only thing we're waiting on, because it was by appointment, is the cars are getting new in-car cameras that are axon and compatible with the body camera. But unfortunately, there's we're waiting for them to be installed into the cars and we're kind of on mercy of their timeline. Mm -hmm. So that should be happening towards the end of this month, or I'm sorry, the middle of this month, April. So that, but the cameras are out and operational right now. And I'm happy to report that their software is working flawlessly. Okay, great. Has, has there been a reason yet that you needed to use the, re the recording for something? Right, well, um, 
the recordings we review them administratively um there's there's nothing like a uh, shooting or anything like that but part of that software also is what they call evidence room that's the back of the house software we use but we've been using that extensively for reports so if someone has evidence on their own phone which we've already captured we just send them the link and they upload it to our cloud server and it, it's tagged with the report number so it automatically puts the whole thing together for us it's been very efficient and the officers seem to love it Councillor Schoon. Yes. Councillor Mellon. Yes. Councillor Gardner. Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki. Yes. And President Kultaritis. Yes. Five two zero. Thank you. That brings us to the Clean City EDCS agreement and proposal. So uh, this is uh, a follow-up piece of uh, action from the Clean Cities grant approval that you gave previously. Uh, we are looking uh, to utilize a $9,000 grant. Uh, we have a proposal from Ozinga Energy in the amount of $13,995 for the acquisition and installation of uh, the electronic vehicle charging station in the southwest corner of Town Hall's front parking lot. Uh, item will cover and reimburse 90% of the total project up to $9,000. Uh, with the town responsible for paying the uh, the balance of the cost. Uh, so if it is your pleasure, uh, we would ask you to approve the VW project funding agreement with item uh, and approve the Ozinga energy quote uh, for uh, an amount not to exceed 13,995. Uh, but uh, barring any uh, cat catastrophic change orders, we will only have been out a net of about $5,000. Mr. President, yeah. I would move to approve the VW project funding agreement number VWL 2 025 with IDEM and approve the Onzinga Energy Quote number 269 in the amount of 13995 for acquisition and the installation of a level 2 EDCS. Is there a second? I second it. All right. Any discussion? I have a final question uh, in regards to this. Uh, Great that we're moving forward with this, but are all the charging stations have this? Are they all standardized for the way they plug in to all the different cars, or is it just because each? I mean, they give its own right. So I, I was under the impression that Tesla has their own hookup, but the other cars have a different setup. So that's my only question. Are we going to have something that's universal? One. That is a great question. Unfortunately, I'm still uh, burning carbon myself on I'm six cylinders. <laughs> no, that's a that's an so outstanding like question. That's running this uh, yeah. this program, and you know, we're gonna. I mean, are we gonna does this system have the ability for everybody to utilize it? That's my question. I don't know the answer. If if you'd like, we can put uh, we can pause this, and I can circle back around at the next council meeting, or I could just update you in our weekly update. That's fine. Okay. I mean, I think it's a great idea, but that's my only question. With that question, I would also add if you could see what the hospital does and see if this is going to be the same or different than what the hospital's charging stations. And again, it doesn't really affect. My, I think it's good that we're doing it just for further information. I normally don't answer questions, but sir, did you have, you, had a, you raised your hand, so. Having an electric car since 2013, standard, I think it's a JP239 is what Tesla does have their own 239 is a standard. So, so whenever you go out driving, the most of the places. Hospital, the hospital, uh, holes. Uh -huh. You have to have a little card or a little plastic thing that wave in front of it. Okay, we're well, good. Thank you. A quick Google of this says that all EVs sold in North America use the same standard level two charging plug. This means you can charge 
any electric vehicle at any standard level two. Yeah. So, I mean, so Google great. has the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have no other well, questions. I have no other questions either. My question on this one is, uh, is there any revenue potential, or I'm assuming the person charging pays, but does the town get any portion of that? I don't know. Any... No. It all goes to NIPSCO? NIPSCO. <laughs> Did you think it would be otherwise? Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> I wasn't sure, you know, do you have a Pepsi machine in the lobby? You know, does it all go to Pepsi or do you get some, mm -hmm. some sort of that? And when you go to a gas station, the, the owner of the gas station gets a little bit of money. Just curious about yeah. the mall. Roll call. Councillor Scone? Uh, yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. Councilor President, uh, Council President Culturitis. Yes. Five two zero. Thank you. That brings it. To, the, there is mention in Ozinga's uh, quote something about um, amp up bills through EV driver through the app and sends the revenue monthly to Munster. So I, I don't know what that means. Um, but again, that, that might be something, again, I doesn't change the way I vote on this, but that might be something we can look at. I will follow up on that. That was in Ozinga's quote, whatever page it was. Uh, Great. Whatever I'm looking at. That's why we include all the documents. <laughs> yeah, because they're front their cover page. All right. That brings us to CCMG 2020-2 construction award. Yes, this was, if you are a close reader of the agenda, this was not on the agenda Friday afternoon. This was, uh, the agenda was amended to include this today. Uh, we are under a pretty tight deadline with the state of Indiana. We have to have this award granted by the 8th. Uh, so it was not possible to push this to the 19th. Uh, so I appreciate the uh, the willingness to hear this this evening. This is a good bit of local paving that we're going to do uh, for our residents and our residential areas. Uh, in December, you approve the contract between INDA and the town. Uh, and now I would ask you to authorize the award of the construction funds to the lowest, most responsive and responsible bidder. Uh, just to bring you up to speed, this is Elliott Drive, Timmick, Crestwood, and Bluebird. And of those four road segments, we're going to have two water main uh, replacements, one on Crestwood and one on Timrick. And recall that Timrick was particularly troublesome, uh, which is why you're seeing this uh, kind of, if not the 11th hour, then certainly uh, at the 10 and a half hour, because we had to re-engineer uh, what that Timrick mobilization would look like to fix that water main uh, because it was having so many breaks chronically. Uh, and unfortunately, the way that INDA administers these grants is we couldn't say, well, let's just not do Timrick. We'll just do everything else. It's all one designation number, the DES number. So if you say, I can't do this par portion of the project, they say, well, that's no problem. You don't get any money. Come back next year. And I don't think that would be the best way to handle the situation. I think it, we uh, we put our shoulder to the stone and we moved it. So, uh, so I appreciate you uh, entertaining this. But we do have uh, two bids that were uh, below our engineer's estimate. So that's good news. Uh, and Reith Riley is the lower of the two. So I broke down those prices uh, against the engineer's estimate. Reith Riley and Milestone North. Milestone North is going to get a, a while taking to get used to saying that instead of Walsh and Kelly. But uh, we have, again, on the third page, uh, the breakdown of who pays what in that pays for the resurfacing, the town will pay for half of the resurfacing and all of the water. Uh, so what we're looking for uh, is uh, an approval to move forward with Reith Riley for this, as the successful bidder for CCMG part two in 2020 at a cost not to exceed uh, $1 million, $678,124. So moved. Is there a second? 
I'll second that. I'm sorry, who moved? I apologize. Thank you, Steve. And who seconded? Chuck. Chuck. Thank you. Any discussion on this? Good job getting both of those things done and still getting appreciate the effort to get it in <laughs> right on time. All right, roll call, please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. President Colteritis? Yes. Five to zero. That brings us down to the resolution of 2080 road, road salt purchase. Yeah. Uh, it seems almost the opposite of timely. Uh, <laughs> But this is the schedule that uh, INDOT runs on. So after the season's over, then you, you line up uh, how much you're going to purchase in the next season. Uh, I think staff did a really good job outlining how much salt we've used in the past uh, as a matter of historical record. Uh, and we're looking to purchase up to 3,600 tons of treated road salt uh, for the 21-22 season. And hopefully that 21-22 season doesn't come <laughs> soon at all. Mr. President, I would make a motion to approve resolution 2080 authorizing the town manager and the director of public works to purchase up to 3,600 tons of treated road salt from the awarded state contractor through the 2021-2022 state joint purchasing program bid on road salt for NDOT Laporte district number or zero. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right. That's all that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so much easier to second it than to make it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 sort of an informational question. I know last year we used 4,454 tons mm -hmm. and we're authorized to buy 3,600. Do we have leftover from previous years or how do we cover that? We do. We, we have leftover. Quantity. Quite adequate. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. President Coulteritis? Yes. Five to zero in favor. Brings us down to resolution 2081 authorizing an extension of contract sidewalk replacement program. So, this is uh, to answer your question, uh, Councillor Schoon. Uh, this is the uh, recommended contractor that the town uses. Uh, JJ Newell knows the town very well. We've had a really productive relationship with them over the years. They are keeping their prices the same this year, and we would like your permission to continue to work with them. I move that, oh, Mr. President, I move that we authorize the extension of sidewalk replacement program contract with JJ Newell Concrete Contractors, Inc. through December 31, 2021. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Question. It's a great day. Roll call, please. Councillor Schoon? Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. President Coulteritis? Yes. 5-0 in favor. Thank you. That brings us to Ordinance 1822, Salary Ordinance Amendment. Um, I can start if you'd like. There's a couple of pieces in here. Um, the first one is that um, District 1 has been called up by the Department of Homeland Security, and that covers five counties. And our own Chief Sheckel is the head of that District 1. Um, they have been called up because there is a mass inoculation site in Northwest Indiana that is opening tomorrow. And it is for the underserved and it's opening in Gary. Um, it'll be operational seven days a week, 12 hours a day. They're expecting it to run for an eight week period. They are requesting 16 officers during the day and eight at night. And um, again, that is over five counties. Um, we, the town typically does not, has a policy in accordance with the FSL, FLSA that we do not pay overtime to any exempt employees. However, we will be reimbursed from the state of Indiana for all related payroll expenses as a part of this. And so the first part is asking for overtime, a one-time overtime payment to exempt sworn officers during this um, eight-week period. So that's the first part. The second one is, oh, the second one 
than what I thought it was. Um, I always, <laughs> always skip to the salary distribution, and that is that um, there was some determination that um, some of the maintainers out in the park department are spending time working on the generator, and so we're just shifting some of their payroll uh, funding into the um, solid waste management and taking it out of parks to appropriately allocate for the time that they spend. And then the other items I'm going to pass to town manager Anderson. Sure. Uh, if we go back to page one, uh, this ordinance uh, proposes making a change in the uh, classification of employees, but not the net number of employees. Uh, typically, my office has been staffed between four and six people uh, over the years, uh, and we've been running with three uh, pretty well for a number of years, but uh, I think we need help. I, I think we need a couple, uh, we, need, we need a body in there. Uh, so what I'm proposing is uh, we take that human resource uh, director position that was uh, staffed from January of 17 to February of 19. We eliminate that and we reinstate the assistant town manager position. We'll give that responsibility to the assistant town manager. So it's not so much the function will be eliminated, but the breadth of that uh, position uh, responsibility would be broadened. So. Uh, I propose putting this exactly where it used to be uh, in grade 17. Uh, and I would really appreciate you allowing me to have a, have a little help. And we also have, uh, not in the ordinance, but just as, a, as an FYI, there's some ongoing discussion about what to do uh, with uh, Centennial Park. Uh, we're all familiar that it is our busiest park and uh, at its busiest time of use, there is no town employee out there. So there's been a conversation with the park board and amongst the town council about how best to uh, take care of that asset uh, because it's a beautiful park and everybody wants it to stay beautiful. Uh, so there's a, there's a number of different uh, proposals and thoughts that we're working through, but while the salary ordinance was being contemplated, one potential uh, solution would be to create a position of park attendant. And that park attendant would just, you know, be a person out there in a neon shirt that says staff with a wide brim hat and a trash picker and a golf cart that would just be a presence uh, there that says this is park is maintained and cared for. And if they happen to see something, they could uh, politely interject. And if their uh, polite interjection was rejected, they would just simply call the requisite authorities. But mostly, uh, they would be there just to be a presence to let people know that we care about our park and they should too, and to take care of that park while they're on, on duty. Uh, so they would work in the afternoons uh, until dusk when the police department and the park closed down. Uh, that's not in the ordinance currently, uh, but uh, sensitive to the fact that the weather outside was not frigid today. So that, that season is coming and uh, it would behoove us to consider it uh, in a timely manner. So we are not suggesting that you adopt Ordinance 1822 uh, without a second read, uh, so, but we would like you to consider it. All right, thank you. Yeah, I will move to hear proposed Ordinance 1822 on first reading and schedule a second reading for our next regular meeting. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Is there any discussion? I actually, I have a question, Mr. President. Sure. Um, so Dustin, for this position that we could possibly consider for the park park attendant, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect that they would probably work seven days a week. So are you looking? Are you thinking two? Or how are you think? How are you thinking we would cover every day? Well, I think you know uh, you could make a case that the weekends would be the best. Perhaps uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think initially it, it probably would not be the worst thing if you were to do it seven days a week at the beginning of the season, because they're not working a full day and it's a seasonal position. Uh, staff costed that out at approximately you know fifteen thousand dollars for the entire season for the total number of people uh, to, to work that, uh, and, and that's a that's a cost that we are able to accommodate responsibly. 
and certainly uh, as the season progresses, maybe it doesn't make sense to have them on a Tuesday night, maybe, or a Wednesday night. But I think uh, initially you probably wanna try it. Just, and, and then it's all, I, I would think it would be easier to work by paring down than staffing up. I say I driving here this evening, so six thirty ish. It was packed. Yeah. And it's Monday, so and that's, that's great, right? Yeah, but I, that's why I ask if it, you know, yeah. because um, when it's night, it's not this weekend, so that's that's why I wanted to ask the question. And the other question I had was regarding the fourth position in your office, and you would you you said um, transfer the duties of human resources related. Um, issues is would that be the full load for that particular position or you see that position performing other duties as well they would do other duties as well okay. and so right now you have is it being split among the two people in your office it, those? It, it's dispersed not only between ish and i but also pushed in part to the clerk treasurer's office pushed to some department heads it is an inelegant solution. Right. Okay. Okay. I was just yep. curious. Thank you. No, it would not be the only thing, uh, for sure. It would not be the only thing on that individual's plate. Okay. So it's not an HR director in an assistant comm manager's name. No, right. no. Uh, I, I would I would imagine that that position would be inward focus. Uh, we would we would split our duties. Uh, I wouldn't like delegate everything internally focused, like in, uh, internal improvements process improvements, things like that. But kind of just conceptualizing how that uh, that, that uh, position has been staffed in the past, uh, it would depend on the right candidate, right? So certain people bring certain skills, right? And I'm open to the opportunity that they would supplement uh, and build out what we have on our team of department heads and staff already. So it would be hard to say exactly. I could give you certainly the description that exists right now. Uh, but what that person will end up doing on a on a day to day basis, I mean, depends on the workload on any given day. How does the park attendant position get paid? Is that out of the park budget then? It would be, sir. And how does that relate to the fact that they have a this big shortfall? Well, many departments did have a shortfall, uh, and when that uh, memo was written by the clerk treasurer's office. That memo was written, I think appropriately, uh, not considering the American Recovery Act funds uh, that were in discussion. Uh, in the intervening time since that memo was written, uh, appropriately, we've received guidance from not only some of our financial advisors, but also the Treasury Department that says that revenue that will come to the town of Munster can absolutely be used for revenue replacement uh, for uh, departments and municipalities. So the, the very large hole can uh, affirmatively, uh, the mask is hard to articulate sometimes. So there, there still persists, you know, how do we wrestle with the, the property tax caps that we live in? Uh, and that's an ongoing conversation that uh, we're gonna have as a, as a, as a team, as a, as a council and the people who work for you on council. But in terms of like this year, or next year, th that is not an immediate, like, well, we got to furlough people. Well, we're only going to open four days a week. That's not that. It's more of now uh, an existential question rather than a nuts and bolts question. I think having some sort of eyes in the parks, if we, I think we would do that by the next uh, meeting, if I understood the reading right. Bring those people up. And that can give us a lot more information about what's going on, new ideas maybe for future revenue generation, or just like some ideation as well. So I'm uh, supportive of that. I did have one clarification, Wendy, on the you said 16 officers per day and eight per night, and that's across the five counties. That's distributed across, but that's not just our police department. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, and the state of Indiana is is reimbursing us for overtime and any bag fill. So if we have an officer at the site and we need an officer to come here, we get all of that. And we've got charts and you know, a little graph to fill it out. We've got calculated the dollar amounts. Okay. Yeah. 
I mean, we need all hands on deck for that, so I'm appreciative of that. And we've got the money for it, so also support your effort. The vaccination site is the one that's going to be at Roosevelt High School? Yes, I believe it's Roosevelt, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and it opens tomorrow, correctly? Correct. Soft open tomorrow. Wednesday is uh, the first full full day. Is, is there a different uh, registration process for that? For, for that site that we're aware of? It's kind of off topic. So. That's okay. It's important information. Do they register through the one shot? They do. Um, okay. They do. Should just be much more availability now for for students. Correct, Mr. President. I would ask um, regarding the assistant town manager position. Is that you said there's already a job description prepared or there is okay. It has been staffed for well. You were here for many years. Okay, I, I guess part of this. Um, I, I'm I'm really good with with the position. Uh, I would like to have. I, Think a little bit more of a further uh, explanation of the timeline of when that position is going to be filled and what are the, like the many immediate um, uh, opportunities for that position to take on uh, more or less just to protect uh, yourself and also protect the town council here so we don't come with uh, ex expectations that maybe aren't, aren't true to you know bringing in a new staff person so i guess i just would like to have a little bit more of a discussion of how how some of those roles might be uh, uh, divided up, uh, but again, I think there's there's there is a need for that type of position. So, um, with regards to the um, uh, park um, attendant or park security or whatever you want to call that, uh, I certainly think it's a it's a good measure as a preventative pro proactive measure to have extra set of eyes out there in the park, especially when the park is the busiest. Um, I would also like to. Um, make mention though that uh, in your discussion, um, Tom Andrew, you worked with the park department and also the police department, that this just strictly is not on the park security person to handle um, BBIs and ears out there. We've asked the police department to have a little extra patrol out there and things like that. And I would like to make mention and thank the police department for their, their efforts and kind of working that this is a three prong approach and not just put this all on the park department and the park board. You just trigger my mind, Chuck, as well, that this recommendation is a result of our work study conversation that we had together with the parks department. I thought it was a thoughtful conclusion uh, amongst the three parties from, from that discussion. You good? Yes, I don't <laughs> think it's up questions. All right. All right. Oh, Very good. Councillor Schoon. Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. And Council President Colteritis? Yes. We have a five to zero, and we'll hear this again on second reading. Ordinance 1824, re refuge disposal. Yes, this yeah. is uh, related to, I apologize for that. Uh, this is related to the recent uh, adoption of Homewood Disposal Service as our solid waste and recycling uh, contractor. Recall they were the lowest uh, responsive and responsive bidder, uh, and that is going to move uh, the per household uh, cost from 1536 to 1845, I believe, off the top of my head. But that is not the only. Uh, charge that we charge residents. So if we also charge for leaf collection, uh, so when you look at your water bill, let me back up. You look at your water bill, you see a solid waste fee. Uh, so the ordinance uh, that we're talking about is amending schedule A for solid, solid waste. So with that solid waste fee, we pay for our leaf collection, which is uh, probably the most robust I've ever seen any municipality provide. And we also provide nearly year round branch collection. Uh, we occasionally stop to plow snow. So those two activities have a significant cost and the, we have not increased this fee since 2014. And that includes going out to bid uh, once before and uh, collecting uh, waste management for a second run. So we were able to navigate uh, a, a bid process and a higher uh, residential rate while not uh, asking for uh, an adjustment in that fee. So 
over the last seven years, we have uh, experienced some increased costs. So uh, not to read the memo to you, but there is a, a cost of operations and there's a, 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 the revenue that rece we receive. And there is a, a gap there. Uh, just if you are, are curious, I think it's fascinating that leaf collection and branch collection is more than $400,000 a year. Uh, but I think it's $400,000 well spent because people love it. Uh, and just like the OJ say, you give the people what they want, right? So, uh, but to do that, we do have about a $400,000 shortfall in the cost of those operations and the revenue that we currently collect. Uh, so if we were to uh, adjust that, uh, we would come up with a, uh, a new rate uh, that is $23.80. So the current rate is $19.43. Uh, it would increase by $4.37 to $23.80 is what we would propose. Now, a couple points that are very important uh, on branch and leaf collection. Right now, uh, we provide that service just if it's on the corner, on the curb, we pick it up. But you'll note that Schedule A only affects residential properties. So there is, uh, a, a policy question there of how do we how, how do we equitably charge this to all the people who benefit from the service now that's a really important question that's an appropriate question and kudos and thanks to the clerk treasurer's office for bringing this question to the conversation uh i don't have an answer and i don't think we could come up with an answer as a team uh, in the amount of time necessary to pass this to make sure we pay our bills. But it is a question that does need to be answered. Uh, and fortunately, unfortunately, Homewood Disposals Service has uh, an annual increase. So this will not be our only bite at this apple. So we will have uh, 365 days to have an earnest conversation uh, about the most elegant and fair, equitable way to charge this in the future. But in the interim, I think this is the most responsible way to approach this issue. Thank you, Mr. Say you. Mr. President, I will make a motion that we, um, I gotta take off my glasses that are fogged up, uh, approve ordinance 1824 entitled an ordinance amending schedule A, a non-codified portion of the municipal code amending fees for the refuse disposal, uh, disposal on first read and set second reading and adoption at our next meeting on April 19th. There a second. Second. All right. Any further discussion on this? Mr. President, I just have a question triggered by what you mentioned of non residential. Uh, could, for us, can you give a, a, a couple of examples of non residential users? Can I say, like the Cancer Resource Center, mm -hmm. when they pick up their leaves, the leaves are left on the curb. We pick them up because mm -hmm. that's what we do, but they don't pay any fees. They have a lot of trees right there. So those type of locations. So it would be a flat fee for anyone that doesn't pay the twenty-four dollar uh, trash collection. Oh, because they pay their own refuse exactly. removal yes. with whoever they contract with. So, but they do have a, a water bill where this could be. They do get a water bill. Uh, yes. To figure out how much. Yeah, we just have to figure out the dollar amount. I, I just had a question. Um, I know with the water rates which is your next ordinance, whenever you're gonna increase rates, you typically have to have a public hearing. So my question with this ordinance 1824 and the one 1823, setting the second reading on April 19th, is have 10 days notice in the paper, so. Yeah, we're gonna to have to do that in May. We, we, are, tomorrow, once. Um, can, we, can we make it on both of these or are we gonna to have to push to the first meeting in May? I think we can do it if uh, we have 10 days. Trisha and I had the conversation earlier today. If we get it there tomorrow and we they publish it on Friday. It's up to the paper. Yes. We'll accept it. So we can get it to the paper tomorrow. It was April. We can yeah. publish on Friday. Friday and, and, and if they don't publish Friday, obviously you're gonna you're okay. gonna have to go into that first end. Mm -hmm. Typically, in your motions, you guys have a, a statement that you're going to have a public hearing. So oh, okay. that was the other kind of. I, 
But I will. I, I can. But as long as we all know that that's going to happen and the clerk treasurer is going to do it for these two ordinances, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Councillor Stone. Yes. Councillor Mellon. Yes. Councillor Gardner. Yes. Councillor Tulewitzki. Yes. President Kulturitis. Yes. Five two zero. That brings us to Ordinance eighteen twenty three water rates. We've been looking forward to. That's right. Well. It's a rough crowd already. <laughs> That's right. So uh, laid out a pretty detailed uh, memo for you and the public to consider. Uh, in broad strokes, we have a, a new wholesale rate. Uh, we started the conversation with the city of Hammond with them wanting to adjust our wholesale rate from 52 cents to $1.90. We ended that conversation with uh, adjusting that a wholesale rate to 95 cents. So in that sense, it's a huge success. I, I just wanna start there. Uh, and I, I think that is a, a number that is gonna get Hammond what they need to get to continue to produce uh, clean water from the lake and distribute it to its wholesale customers, they needed to adjust a rate for sure, without a doubt. Uh, and I think this is a this is a fair number for the city of Hammond. And I think it's a fair number for us because we also have not had an increase uh, for that wholesale rate. So looking at how we accomplish this uh, is, is a little bit of a challenge and Wendy and Tricia have done a tremendous amount of work calculating uh, and figuring how best to accomplish this so I, I just want to give thanks and you know Tricia and Wendy can jump in any time that they, they, they feel it would add value but basically we're going to be invoiced for all the water that we've used so far this year in 2021 uh, at 95 cents. So we've been paying 52 cents, but there, there, there's going to be another bill coming because we've used a lot of water, uh, about 3 million gallons a day, generally. Uh, and so we got to pay that. So to do that, uh, we calculated what it would be per household uh, based on the meter size. And that number was uh, kind of large. So we uh, broke that into six uh, payments for the balance of the year. Uh, and that I think is a, a really elegant solution that Wendy and Tricia came up with rather than to have a sticker shock of one significant bill on top of a regularly more expensive bill, you're gonna have that, uh, that uh, six month kind of interim rate that will pay off what you what you purchased for the first six months basically and then how that pays for what we've already used and then there's the question of what we pay for as we move forward so if we were to look at how we're going to conceptualize that we, we take a look at what we currently charge uh, on, a, on a volumetric pricing uh, and that is on table one uh, if we were to adjust our rates from uh, 2018 when these rates were last adjusted and then pass through the variance between our old wholesale rate and our new wholesale rate, we have uh, the rates uh, for volumetric pricing there. Now on table two, uh, no, what's not in this memo, I just wanna call out in the ordinance itself, there's minimum pricing. That minimum pricing may change a penny or two based on uh, final calculations uh, between now uh, and and the uh, but ho hopefully potential adoption of this. I just wanted to call that out. Uh, so this is it, it, we're going to charge more, right? So if you if you look at table three, I think what you really want to know is how much is it going to cost me, right? So if you got a five thousand dollar five thousand gallons of consumption and your regular old five eighths inch connection, your current rate. Uh, for water is 15 bucks and 65 cents. Your new rate's gonna be $22.59. And that includes the, the six month uh, 
if you have kids that do uh, laundry and showers, uh, it might be $30.35 a month for 10,000 10, gallons of consumption, if not more, if you live at my address. Uh, my new rate will be $37.70 or more. So that's probably more in line with the, uh, the, the, the common home in, in Munster. But even then, right? So let, let's put that in context. If you look at the, the figure one, and these are old numbers, right? These are, these are numbers from a while ago where all these numbers could have gone up. If you take where we were now uh, versus where everyone else was in 2019, we're all the way down at the left-hand side of that graph. And then when you take this six month retroactive fee to pay for the water that we already bought, and then you take the new rate that we're going to pay uh, for the water that we're going to buy, we're still way, 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 way on the left-hand side of that graph. And you can say, uh, on the one hand, that's really good. We're, we're not paying a ton of money. That, that's That's... That's outstanding news. Uh, I would say that that belies uh, some significant investment that will come due uh, because water is one of those things that you can't mess around with because we all need it every day, all day long. Uh, and we have uh, among the responsibilities that government has is to provide safe water is pretty far up the list. And you look at what's going on in town, right? Uh, we have a lot of water main breaks. It's no secret. You get an Ixel alert. Everyone gets them, right? It's not something that's been swept on the rug. We've just become used to, oh, there's an, an Ixel alert for a water main break. Water will be out four to six hours. Uh, there's no boil notice. You, you kind of get used to seeing those. That's not normal. That's not. That's not. Uh, we've had over 20 water main breaks this year. That, that's, that, that, that speaks of a system that is aching for maintenance. So what you've done, and I appreciate it, is you have allowed us to uh, begin work doing a cost of service study that's going to look at what it costs to operate and maintain our water system and our sewer and our storm system. We're actually having our kickoff meeting uh, later this week. So that, that's to me, super exciting. <laughs> to you, it's probably grown inducing <laughs> based on the reception of this ordinance. <laughs> but this is good. This, I mean, what I'm trying to say in, in elegantly is these are positive steps towards taking care of probably our most significant and important assets. So this is really, you know, we're going to pay more. I'm going to pay more. It, it's, it, it's hard to wrestle a win out of this, but the the, the, the net is we're taking steps to protect and appropriately and responsibly maintain one of the most important things that we're asked to do by our residents and businesses. Uh, and it's a re responsibility that I take very seriously and I know you do too. So if there's a way to make this a better ordinance, uh, I know that we would love to incorporate uh, further improvements, but this is the best we could come up with right now. I would make a motion uh, that we approve ordinance 1823 entitled an ordinance amending schedule a a non codified portion of the municipal code amending fees for the water utilities on first read and set second reading and adoption at our next meeting. On April 19th. Second. Um, I second the motion. All right, any discussion. My question would be is with regards to the back charge. And it's fine that we're doing it this way with the size of the water meter, but couldn't we just back charge them for the first, you know, the, the amount of water that was used for the first number of months? I don't know. That we'll, I want to turn this over to Trisha. I, I don't know that that's uh, equal thing because we don't necessarily pull in the exact number of gallons that we, that customers use in that tank. Okay, so it was considered though, but it's it's hard to yes, find it. Okay, okay. I, I couldn't find a way to make those match up. And the only other thing I would have to say is I, I do appreciate your sincerity, Dustin and, and Tom Manager, and the rest of the staff that's working on these things. Uh, so much when we talk about water utilities or any kind of utilities, it's a it's a big cloud, and and I do appreciate the the effort, but there also comes with the effort and with these raises or um, increases in fees. 
is a tr tremendous amount of responsibility that we use this, this money wisely and for infrastructure. And I, I appreciate the sincerity that you're going through with this and also uh, with the staff that you've talked to also. So um, it is a, it's a heavy topic and, and it's something that I, um, it, but it's, it's important that we do that for the long-term uh, vitality of the town. I would have a, also, Mr. President, a comment and, and a question. Um, that we're doing the cost of service study. I mean, I won't probably be in those meetings, but I'm also excited that we're starting that. Uh, I've seen over and over things that we've done to get prepared for other things coming down the pipe, like the zoning code for RDA funds that come that help us have sort of shovel ready, more shovel ready product. I think the cost of service study is something that will also have us know actually what it's going to take and what we would do in order to upgrade our water infrastructure uh, and other utilities. I think we're looking at other utilities. And with the American Jobs Plan that's being proposed, I know there's a significant portion of that federally that is targeted at water infrastructure and sewage infrastructure. I don't think we have lead pipes. That's what I've been hearing. It's definitely trying to eradicate. But I think having the cost of service study done make it easier for us to apply for grants or really know what we need to, to spend for that. Um, so I'm supportive of that. I'm sure you'll keep your mind on how do we divert some of those funds. So if it doesn't have to go to residents, it won't. Um, oh yeah, and then also I was thinking this chart, how, I love how you said it's great that we're to the left because it's cheap for our water, but it also means we're under investing. And I was thinking, um, with, with Dr. Andy here, it would be like people not going to the dentist, right? You You're saving spend, a ton of money. <laughs> you don't spend money year after year after year, but at some point, uh, it's going to be a painful process, you know, and then maybe go to the finances of the dentist in, in the long run, but we'd rather be moving a bit more to the right and spending good money on taking care of our uh, infrastructure. Yeah. Um, the question I have is minimum pricing. Could you just explain that for everyone? What does that mean that there's a minimum pricing? It, there's a, I don't have the number right in front of me, but there's a certain number of gallons up to, even if you use one gallon, there's a minimum charge up to, is it 29 something? It depends on the size of the, of the, size of the meter. So if you're the smallest meter, I just two, basically, including 29. 2,967 gallons. You're prepaying for those, whether you use Whether you use zero, just for having the meter in your house. Okay. You have a minimum. It Thank represents you. that cost that the town has to have that water ready the minute you turn the cost on, whether you do or not. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you all. All right. Roll call, please. Councilor Stone. Yes. Councillor Mellon? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Tulowitzki? Yes. And Council President Kultoritis? Yes. That's five to zero. We'll have a public hearing and uh, see this again on second rate in two weeks. Okay. All righty. There are no reports, portfolio reports. Does anybody have anything they wish to bring up today? I will uh, just let the council know that our next month's your civic foundation meeting will be uh, Monday, April 26th. Uh, so just please mark that on your calendars. Mo Monday, April 26th, there will be an announcement that will come out via email to the rest of the civic foundation members within the next day or two. All right. Announcements all town council meetings will begin at 7 p.m. unless otherwise noted. April 12th, no meeting. April 19th, there is a meeting. April 26th, there is no meeting. May 3rd, there is a meeting. May 10th, there is not. May 17th, there is a Murphy Town Council and Development Commission meeting. That brings us down to adjournment. I move that we adjourn. There are second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you for attending tonight. Good night, everybody. Good night. Yeah, sure. oh, 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 oh. We was on the line all time. Oh. Yeah, we're going to pass this card down to Dr. Andy. Get started. Um, I have a little packet for the next one. All right. I will bring the.
Redevelopment Commission regular meeting for April 5th, 2020. One to order. This is a PowerPoint card. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Commissioner Scone? We have to have a wave Present. Present. Yeah. Commissioner Mellon. Present. 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 Charging stations. There's an app. You can do not see anybody on the phone. That portion of the ready. meeting that brings us to the consent agenda. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I move okay. that we accept the consent okay. agenda as presented. Most of the text is there. Second. Is there any discussion? It's just a DC. Commissioner Spoon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Mellon. Yes. Commissioner Gardner. Yes. Commissioner Tulowitzki. Yes. And Commissioner Kultaritis. Yes. Five zero. Accept the consent agenda. Thank you. There is nothing under old business. There is nothing under new business. There is nothing under reports. There is nothing under announcements. That brings us up to adjournment. I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. This meeting is adjourned. All right. Thank you, John. Yes. Yeah, thank you. We always try to keep it interesting for you. Hey, that's all right.